what we are talking about today. Uh, I called this presentation a multi MK4 advanced Vulkan render so, uh, on macOS. I'm using macOS as primary development platform for uh, I don't know, 10 years. And you know, uh, most of this time, macOS was not a target platform. So to create dedicated metal rendering, highly optimized, working good on, on macOS, uh, was never kind of a goal. Uh, what was uh, the most important? Uh, to have uh, Vulkan code running on macOS and uh, provi to provide possibility to develop on macOS. Uh, and where Amazon VK uh, came into the scene, it was an incredible so, uh, framework that uh, widely used. And uh, however, let's look at how it works uh, these uh, more sophisticated renderers. Uh, in this presentation, first of all, let's try to align our expectations, what we call advanced Vulkan renderer. Uh, and I, this presentation is kind of practical. I will give you some tips and tricks uh, how to initialize modern VK to work with this type of uh, renderers, uh, how to achieve uh, bindless actually working, also a couple of tricks about uh, compute shaders and specialization constant. Uh, so, about expectations. For us, advanced uh, Vulkan render is a render that uses bindless for textures and buffers. For that, there are two extensions in uh, Vulkan that, uh, that's, uh, that are required. First of all, uh, first extension, buffer device address. Uh, it allows us to uh, get access to data in buffers, in shaders, by the physical addresses. And the second extension, a descriptor indexing, allow us to uh, have arrays of uh, texture samplers uh, and get access to them in shaders by indexes. Uh, first extension is available is uh, in Vulkan uh, 1.3 as a core. Uh, the second extension may uh, be used starting with Vulkan 1.2. Uh, so, and the uh, other feature that is uh, required for us is dynamic rendering. Yes, we find that uh, having heavy uh, render pass objects is not really practical, especially then you have uh, highly dynamic scenes, then you, when you need to recompose your frame based on visible content. Um, so yes, dynamic rendering is what we choose here. And uh, extended dynamic state allow us to get rid of uh, uh, the K pipeline objects uh, for state we uh, change frequently, like depth tensile state. Uh, and uh, talking about molten uh, VK compatibility uh, with it, uh, hopefully, extended dynamic state was implemented in molten VK quite recently, by the way, since built. Uh, and uh, uh, argument buffers that's used to uh, power bindless. Uh, available in uh, molten vk2 uh the yes we also would like to have multi-draw indirect uh but uh, unfortunately by limitation of uh, metal uh we don't have it at the moment so it's unfortunately out of scope uh so let's concentrate on uh, bindless uh in molten vk and dynamic rendering uh, so when we align our expectations, let's go to uh, some tricks how to actually initialize molten VK to work with uh, such requirements. First of all, uh, recently in Vulkan SDK, latest model uh, VK X layer settings extension was introduced. It provides uh, this way to uh, set up molten VK configs. Someone asked about how to uh, enable uh, this environment variable, so exactly this way. Uh, now, without uh, using uh, MVK config, just use uh, uh, this extension to uh, enable argument buffers. Uh, it's the first thing you need to do when you work with bindless. The second thing is to, unfortunately, disable shade revalidation. Uh, the thing is, uh, molten decay is uh, uh, almost one, uh, Vulcan one, Point three compatible, but 
uh, it's still not. So targets per reversion for it is uh, 1.5. And if you try to fit, uh, it's probably 1.6 shares there, you will get uh, validation errors. So to get rid of them, you need to disable uh, this validation. So it, uh, uh, at least you will uh, get rid of uh, a lot of mess in your log. Uh, and uh, another hack you probably you need to do is to mock uh, code in the validation layers uh, to unblock yourself, basically. Uh, when you, when we, it's our experience when we write uh, shaders uh, uh, that uses bindless, so we have uh, uh, sometimes errors. We uh, post these uh, errors when you, when system instrument with shaders, we typically post uh, some uh, error into issue, provide all the information and to continue development, we have to do something. So if you are going to do something like that, probably it's also will be useful for you. Uh, so uh, pretty much it. Uh, after that, you have a chance to launch your application in Molten VK. And a couple of words about bind this organization that we are uh, following. Um, to get physical address of buffers, uh, we use uh, get buff buffer device address function. Uh, uh, addresses we pass to shaders using uh, push constant or just buffer data. As you see in this uh, code snippet, uh, buffer reference keyword in JLSL uh, used to represent uh, such buffers got by physical addresses. Uh, as you see, oh, sorry. Uh, so uh, buffer reference keyword is used to represent this type of uh, buffers. And uh, as you can mention on this uh, code snippet, uh, buffers can contains other buffers like pointers. So you can build kind of hierarchy. Uh, in terms of textures and samplers, we uh, put uh, arrays of textures, samplers, and uh, images for accessing compute shaders into one descriptor set, and we get access to these uh, uh, resources in shaders uh, by getting uh, textures and samplers from array by index. As you see here, uh, how we sample from this texture by uh, texture ID and sampler ID. Uh, yeah, if we, you try to implement such scheme and uh, launch it, uh, you highly likely you'll encounter the following problem. Uh, for Vulkan, uh, it's uh, like typically to use uh, aliasing. So we have one descriptor set that contains uh, array of texture samplers and images for compute shader. And uh, it's actually one array. So we can use one index for all three arrays. Unfortunately, uh, this way of things is not supported uh, in molten decay, actually in metal. And if you try to do it, you will get uh, compilation error. Uh, two arrays will have the same uh, ID. In this case, is zero. Uh, so we can have uh, several ways to uh, resolve it. First way, we assigned a uh, unique binding index uh, to every array. So uh, you see uh, there is no collisions anymore. Uh, it works. Uh, the problem is uh, you basically need to copy a uh, descriptor set. Uh, so, sorry, copy arrays, uh, put mul uh, the same array multiple times into descriptor set. That leads to increase in size of descriptor pools. Uh, and uh, uh, worse, it uh, makes you to change the code uh, quite significantly to make it work uh, in metal environment. It's the thing we try to avoid and we uh, found another way to do it. Instead of having unique index for uh, every array, uh, now it's unique combination of set and binary index. So we basically use multiple descriptor sets. Uh, the good thing here, if you uh, look at this line, is basically the only line the code you need to change. You can attach the same descriptor set containing containing one array of texture samplers and images multiple times uh, and uh, achieve the same uh, the same behavior. Uh, 
uh, it works. As, as you see, there is no collisions in uh, argument buffers here. Um, and uh, it works until we try to uh, implement shadow mapping. Uh, who can guess what happened here? Uh, so, uh, well, the thing is, we put uh, shadow maps to the, uh, to array of textures uh, uh, to the same array of textures uh, that they put uh, basically all the textures. And if you in metal, if you try to use texture as shadow map, this type promoted promoted to depth to deep, uh, and all the textures now depth to deep. And when you try to sample from them, you will got uh, these uh, artifacts uh, to sample this with your own sampler. To uh, resolve it, we just introduce another set that contains uh, uh, another set that uh, uses the same array. Uh, we, uh, in this case, we interpret it as a texture array for shadow mapping. And you, if you look at uh, layout of argument buffers, uh, no collisions here. Uh, it works quite well. The thing is, uh, limits for a number of sets is more limited than uh, limits for number of bindings. And in theory, if we introduce new combination, we can hit the limit. Uh, but for uh, for main purposes, I suppose uh, current number of descriptor set uh, will be enough. So anyway, it's the best solution we found. It uh, contains both minimal modification of the code to run in Molten and still works uh, on other platforms. Uh, so a couple of words about uh, uh, compute shaders. Uh, here on uh, this code snippet, you see a very simple uh, grayscale shader. And we, again, use uh, bindless here. Uh, as you see, we have unique combination of descriptor set and binding index here, but we use uh, uh, index two. And again, if we try to compile it as this, we will got the following MSL code. Uh, as you see, it inserted uh, two uh, adds array, uh, I suppose for missing uh, binding index zero and one. Uh, and unfortunately, index two hundred seventy two. Uh, it's not valid, so it's this code this will not compile. Um, so uh, currently, we couldn't resolve this uh, issue, uh, but we found uh, no portable workaround. We just use binding with index zero here because index zero is corresponding to the same array, but uh, for for usage in fragment shaders. Uh, why it's not portable uh, for index uh, binding? Binding this index zero, we use uh, uh, shader read uh, layout. So layout that typically used in fragment shader. But for binding uh, this index two, we use general layout to use in uh, compute shaders. And it works in metal, I mean, in molten decay, uh, but it cannot work on uh, Windows or Android. Uh, also, we can use combined read write uh, image for compute shader and uh, get rid of one of argument buffers. Another word to say about compute shaders, it's uh, maintenance for uh, extensions that's currently not uh, implemented in Molten VK. It provides really a useful capability uh, to set up kernel size of compute shader using a specialization constant. Uh, yeah, it's not possible at the moment, but uh, there is obvious workaround on client side you can do to achieve the same. Uh, about atomics, uh, atomics uh, a kind of uh, work. They work quite well for buffers, but they do not work for images uh, for binding the scheme. Uh, the thing is, uh, before Metal three point one, uh, there is there are no atomics for images. So to uh, implement it in uh, uh, Molten VK, uh, it created additional buffer that mapped to uh, image memory. So we can do atomics and buffer to achieve the same on the image. 
as you see, the code that, that's generated contains syntax error it's here. Um, so in Spirit Cross recently, it was added proper implementation for uh, image atomics because Apple edits them. Um, and I hope uh, eventually it will be also available in Molten Decay. Uh, and uh, specialization constants. Uh, you, here you see modified version of uh, Compute Shader I showed previously. We introduced two new uh, fields, two new constants, one for index in array of colors and one for size of this array. Uh, if you look at what generated here, for the first, uh, for the constants that represent in index, it generated function constant, that equivalent of uh, specialization constant in metal, but for another constant generated just plain defined. Uh, the thing is uh, uh, metal by some reason do not support usage, uh, do not support uh, function constant uh, if they are used as array size. Uh, and uh, in this situation, and molten decay doesn't support the recross constant uh, to set up. Uh, so it's kind of implicit behavior. Uh, and it's really hard to debug if you don't know about this implicit behavior. Uh, so, yep, uh, after doing all this stuff, we uh, finally could launch our uh, uh, renderer uh, uh, on uh, molten decay. Uh, it's actually lightweight VK library uh, that is a uh, fork of uh, IGL library that Meta open sourced uh, last year. Uh, it's pure Vulkan and it's uh, Vulkan 1.3 and contains uh, bindless and uh, dynamic render and all the stuff I just described here. Uh, if you would like to play this uh, Molten VK and this uh, uh, type of renderers, please uh, go ahead, it's publicly available. Uh, and finally, I would like to thank, uh, first of all, uh, let me summarize what we uh, what we just uh, knew. Uh, dynamic rendering, it just works, thank you for that. Uh, bindless for textures and buffers uh, can be used in molten decay, I showed how. Uh, Compute shader, again, are possible. Dyna uh, atomics uh, uh, for buffer, too. For images, not really. Uh, for specialization constant, like uh, if you remember about this implicit behavior, it also works. Shader validation uh, uh, needs improvement, uh, uh, and I hope uh, it will be improved in the future. And now, yes, uh, kudos to people without whom this uh, work and this uh, presentation will, wouldn't be possible. Sergey uh, for lightweight VK, Bill uh, and Chip Davis for uh, constant improve, uh, improvement in molten VK and fix it uh, issues I uh, created there. And uh, Hans Christian Anstand for fixing in Spirit Cross. Yes, that's it uh, for today. Thank you very much. Any questions? Do we have any questions? Hello. Uh, my question is. Um, do you know if it's possible in Metal to cast a texture type so that you wouldn't have aliasing, but you would instead cast whatever binding you have? Is that possible? Do you have? Uh, I'm not sure uh, what uh, we have here. We have uh, uh, we don't want really to uh, rewrite Molten Decay. This the thing is, we just need to uh, launch Vulcan code in. Uh, uh, on Mac OS, this minimal modification of our client code. That's the goal. Uh, I suppose probably there are, there are some tricks and metal that can be used. Uh, but uh, again, as Bill mentioned, the uh, team who is doing Molten VK is uh, not so big to do all these things. So thanks for the things they already did. And it works. Uh, it can work on uh, Mac OS. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, I figured it would be an interesting use case for metal itself. Probably, yes. <laughs>